Hi, this is a, another video on <clears throat> bill drafting guidance. This one concerns the bill drafting guidance we get from the California Constitution. When drafting legislation in this state, there are several sources of guidance in drafting bills and other forms of legislation, obviously resolutions and constitutional amendments. The first source is naturally at the top of the hierarchy of laws in our state, just like at the federal level, which is the state constitution. So what sort of legislative drafting guidance do we find that is contained in the California constitution? There are a couple of main areas. The first is urgency clauses. Uh, all of this, by the way, is in article four of the California constitution. Urgency clauses are in section 8D of article four, <clears throat> which provides in part that urgency statutes are those necessary for immediate preservation of the public health, peace, or safety. And a statement of facts constituting that necessity shall be set forth in one section of the bill. And so this constitutional provision instructs a bill drafter on how to address urgency clause bills. It obviously defines what constitutes an urgency, an urgency statute, and it sets forth the requirement that a statement that explains why the bill is an urgency statute has to be included in the bill. And this is done so at the end of the bill in what we call a plus section. And an urgency bill <clears throat> must include not only the urgency clause, but again, also the explanation uh, to justify the urgency of the bill's specific provisions. Um, Article 4, Section 8.5 concerns measures submitted to the voters. And basically, when amending an initiative statute or an act providing for bond issuance or a constitutional amendment proposed by the legislature and submitted to the voters, it can't include or exclude any political subdivisions of the state from the application or effect of the measures provisions uh, or be based upon how many votes are cast in favor of a measure by the electors. Also, um, it cannot contain any alternative or cumulative provisions where one or more provisions become law depending upon uh, the number of votes for or against a particular measure. And so the bill drafter has to be aware of these limitations when they are drafting a constitutional amendment or a bond issuance, et cetera. Next, we find in section nine of the so-called single subject rule in California. By the way, there is a single subject rule uh, that is applicable both for bills, which we're dealing with here, but also uh, for purposes of an initiative measure pursuant to Article Two of the state constitution <clears throat> and our California courts have interpreted them the same way. So section nine of Article Four states in part that a statute shall embrace but one subject which shall be expressed in its title. If a statute embraces a subject not expressed in its title, only the part not expressed is void. And so obviously this constitutional provision makes clear to the bill drafter to make sure that the measure contains a single subject so that unrelated provisions uh, that are unrelated, of course, to the main subject found in the title are not included. Otherwise, those would be void. And of course, this also requires the bill drafter to ensure that the title uh, expresses the subject matter accurately and fully that is contained in the bill. There's also in section nine of article four that reads in part, a section of a statute may not be amended unless the section is reenacted as amended. We call this the reenactment rule. And basically this constitutional provision, as opposed to at the federal level, where you have to figure out where uh, changes to a federal statute are made because you don't have the entire section in front of you. In California, a bill has to include the entire code section in a bill, regardless of how much of that code section is being amended, the whole thing or just one word. Um, so California bills are bound by this reenactment rule so that the entire code that's being amended is reenacted in its entirety. 
Then we turn to some of the budget provisions in uh, section 12 of article four. It says the budget bill shall be accompanied, I'm sorry, the state budget shall be accompanied by a budget bill that itemizes the recommended expenditures. And generally only the budget bill and budget bill junior contain more than one item of appropriation. It also provides what is the roll call vote required uh, and whether a, a bill is keyed a majority vote or two thirds vote. And so section 12 guides the bill drafter when they're drafting the budget bill, budget bills junior, et cetera, that contain these itemized expenditures that <clears throat> they can contain multiple items of appropriations, first of all but it also provides guidance when they are handling or drafting non-budget bills that would otherwise contain just a single item of appropriation. Next, we turn to general versus special statutes. And in Article 4, Section 16, we have a subdivision A that says, all laws of a general nature have uniform operation. And then in subdivision B of section 16, it says a local or special statute is invalid in any case if a general statute can be made applicable. So what this constitutional provision means to the bill drafter is they have to determine whether the bill proposes a general statute or a special statute. And if a special statute is required, you know, for any certain unique reasons, then the bill states that it's a special statute and provides a brief explanation, basically explaining why a general statute cannot apply in the particular circumstances being affected by this special statute bill. And then we have uh, section 17 of article four, which basically is a limitation on public official compensation. And it says that the legislature doesn't have any power to grant or to authorize a local jurisdiction or any other public body to grant extra compensation to public officers or employees or even contractors for any services that they might have rendered uh, or once a contract has been entered into, that can't be changed. So what this constitutional provision provides to the bill drafter is that they can't draft a bill that would grant any sort of extra compensation to public officials or employees. It also can't authorize any uh, local jurisdiction to do the same thing. And this provision makes it clear that a bill can't be drafted um, that would uh, affect claims payments unless there's an agreement that is actually in place. The next one is section 19 of article four, which provides limits on legislative powers. And among other things, it says that the legislature doesn't have power to authorize lotteries. Um, they can provide for the regulation of uh, horse races and wagering in the state. They can authorize cities and counties to provide bingo games, but only for charitable purposes and that they cannot have, that they don't have any authority uh, to authorize casinos of any types in the state. And so these are, these constitutional prohibitions obviously preclude a bill drafter in the state from drafting certain types of measures uh, and then authorizes of course, uh, certain ones like uh, betting on horse races and charitable bingo games. Uh, the last guidance we get out of the state constitution is actually found in section 28 of article four. Um, it basically prohibits the use of urgency clauses as in certain, basically two main um, specific instances. And it instructs the bill drafter that they can't draft a bill with an urgency clause if the bill either deals with the uh, so-called historical West Wing of the California state capitol or if the bill deals with the purchase of furniture for any historical areas of the Capitol, which is defined to include both the assembly and Senate chambers as well. 